Peace to the family, y'all. Peace, love, and light. Whew. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Today's one of them days. Today's one of them days, y'all. The sermon is going to be one of them sermons. I'm forewarning you, if you're triggered by the truth, this one is not for you. If you're easily triggered by the truth, today's sermon is not for you. Just, just sit this one out, y'all, because I'm back in the garden today, and I'm already feeling the presence of the creator in the garden is very, is very thick right now. So the energy that's moving through here is going to be different. I'm telling you, it's going to be one of them ones today if you're easily triggered by the truth. Sit this one out. This might not be the one for you. Yeah, and it's it's an amazing, magnificent day. But we got to have to tell the truth on Father's Day. And today's sermon is titled, Papa Was a Rolling Stone. What if God was the first absentee father? What if God was the first absentee father? God is not married. God don't have grandchildren. And God abandoned his only son, his only begotten son. He abandoned him. And he turned his back on Satan. It's going to be ugly today. And when he started having them light-skinned children, he forgot all about you niggas. What if God was the first absentee parent? Right? Papa was a rolling stone and he started having preferences when he started having them light-skinned babies. And the lighter and the brighter that they got, the less that you seen data. And here you go paying the price and you're led to believe that he loved you the same way that he loved your master. We're going to have to talk about it. Joe, this is Mineral Ministries. I am Pope Pablo. Uh, and we present to you Sunday Service Lion Gates Ministry. Mineral Ministries present epilogue number 92. Papa was a rolling stone. And we're going to get into it. This is the season for the trees. started having them light skin babies you forgot all about you niggas and here we go picking up the pieces to this day we'll talk about it all right here goes the invention of them light skin babies starts in genesis starts in genesis shout out to yaku you tried it was a good story but it goes a little bit further than that it starts with Noah and those three sons that he had right here in Genesis. Noah builds the ark, right? So, you know, we're in Genesis. Okay, so if you're new to the program, the way that we do our dissertations is that we align scripture with the day of the Gregorian calendar. So today is 616, it's Tupac's birthday, right? Shout out to Machiavelli, who... Uh, Numbers in Gematria is 444, also equals the same numbers as Messiah and Jesus. That's a whole nother story. We'll get back to it. Right? Not, I'm not light-skinned by the standards of how God started abandoning, abandoning light-skinned. I said it to my lady this morning. She's like, ain't you light-skinned? We'll get into that. I'm talking about them real light skin, amalgamated until you almost white. Them people, right? When God started having them children and became a rolling stone, he forgot all about you niggas. He just did. And y'all praying to the same God. Does he answer your prayers or do he answer the prayers of the slave master? What, what are we talking about? What are we talking about? All right. So... We aligned the Gregorian calendar date, 616, with scripture. And we go into the scripture and we start extracting scripture throughout scripture to see if there's any congeniality 
Is it telling us a narrative or is it speaking to the theme? And today's theme is Papa was a Rolling Stone. It's Father's Day and it's also Tupac's Born Day. Let's get into it. Let's see what the Bible says. Okay. So Noah builds the ark. Okay. And this is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide and 30 cubits high. So they're giving them the measurements, right? They're laying out the script. Okay. You ought to make a roof for the ark, finish its walls, a cubit from the top, place a door on the side of the ark, build lower, middle, and upper decks. And behold, I will bring floodwaters upon the earth to destroy every creature under the heaven that has the breath of life. Everything on the earth will perish. So we ask again, is God the first absentee father? Right? Because he made these seeds, the same seeds that he ends up killing and destroying and erasing from the face of the earth. He made the seeds in the face of Satan telling him, look, my nigga, you, you're prone to make a mistake when it comes to you making humans because they're not going to do as you obey. He's like, bet, let's run it. They started calling Vegas and seeing what the odds was. They started laying their bets down and look, and then God is proven wrong and Satan is proven right, right out the gate, right out the gate. And it was even before that, because look, Cain was the first one to prove Satan right, right? And then Sodom and Gomorrah proved Satan right. And then on the third iteration of humanity, God had to scrap humanity with Noah and start again with them three sons. And this one, he started favoring them light-skinned children over your black ass. Hence the fact that your black ass got the curse of ham on it. Now, again, I told you, if you are triggered by the truth, this one ain't for you. Just tap out. Tap out. Tap out. You feel me? Because we go in there today. We go in there. Oh, yeah. This what happened. Exodus 6.16. Genealogies of Moses and Aaron. Okay. So, and then he gets it wrong with Moses. Because Moses don't get it right. Moses got to go and rescue a whole group of people who didn't get it right. And then the people that Moses rescued said that he couldn't get it right. They was in the desert for 40 years and they forsake him for having them in the desert. They wanted to go back to Kemet because Kemet provided provisions. Why? Because they were under a bountiful, a plentiful, abundant God. So where did these other gods come from? You know what I'm saying? Was God the first absentee parent? Was he so concerned with being over there creating them light-skinned babies that he forgot all about what was going on over here? And then them other children started adopting their own version of God. And then their God was God and harder than the God of the Bible. And they didn't need him no more. And then he started having to do uh, PR campaigns to get the attention back of his dark skin, you know, and, and further dark skinned children because he was giving attention all of them light-skinned children when he was a rolling stone. Genealogies of Moses and Aaron. The sons of Simeon were Jemuel, Jamin, Ohad, Jachin, Zohar, and Shuel, the son of a Canaanite woman. These were the sons of Simeon. These were the names of the sons of Levi according to their records. Jershon, Kohath, and Morari. Levi lived 137 years, right? So Levi is the quote unquote, you know, the progenitor of the Levites, which are the priesthood, right? And the priesthood of the Kohen, no, not the Kohenites. Let's keep it to the Levites. The Levites were the priesthood who were responsible for adjudicating in Solomon's temple, right? This is the priesthood. All right. And then later on come the Kohenites or Kohathites, but we'll get around to that. Leviticus 6.16, this is the grain offering. All right, grain offering. The priest is to remove a handful of fine flour and olive oil together with all of the frankincense from the grain offering and burn the memorial portion on the altar as a pleasing aroma to the Lord. Aaron and his sons are to eat the remainder. It must be eaten without leaven in the holy place. They are to eat it in the courtyard of the tent of meetings. It must not be baked with leaven. I have assigned it as their portion of my offerings made by fire. It is most holy, like the sin offerings. 
and the guilt offerings. So we oftentimes explain about all of the different offerings that are provided and also the fact that Aaron's sons who were Levite or Levitical priests, they were killed by God for misappropriating the offerings. They got something wrong and they were not, um, they, they were out of their bounds in terms of their instructions as Levitical prince, uh, priests. They, they, they made a wrong offering and he killed them. That's how, that's how particular he was about the details that went into appropriating properly the offerings that was needed and necessary. Now that's a hell of a stickler for details. Someone who was so ardent on their offerings being a certain way, I ask to this day for my fellow brothers and sisters that are Hebrew Israelites, do y'all still make Levitical offerings to get the um, attention of God, the sweet aroma of the sacrifice? Do you still participate in guilt, sin, and wave, and, and you know, sin offerings, which is animal sacrifice? How else are you petitioning the air of your God? Because the Old Testament is diametrically different than the New Testament. Okay. And we, we're just asking questions. We have every right to, you know. They told me that my soul is either going to go to hell or heaven based on this information. So I got to ask some questions, y'all. Number 616, the Nazarite vow. Together with their grain offerings and drink offerings, as a basket of unleavened cakes made from fine flour mixed with oil and unleavened wafers coated with oil, the priest is to present all of these before the Lord and make the sin offering in the burnt offering, he shall also offer the ram as a peace offering to the Lord, along with a basket of unleavened bread and the priest is to offer the accompanying grain and a drink offering. So we got drink offerings. We got peace offerings. We got sin offerings. We got guilt offerings. We got wave offerings. God never came with an offering. So I don't know who's what's what pre. We, we not doing the offerings no more. We just got to pray to Jesus and the prayers is answered. What happened to all of the stipulations that came prior to that? What about the people that are still practicing, uh, you know, their Hebraic uh, traditions and understandings? What do they do? do? Are they still doing peace offerings, sin offerings, drink offerings, food offerings? Nobody talks like this anymore, so I don't I don't know. Do black people make unleavened bread? To my brothers and sisters out there, the Hebrew Israelites, do you make unleavened bread still? Because I want to pull up and get me some. I want to put this on my altar. Deuteronomy 6.16, the greatest commandment. And I'm not being facetious. I'm, I'm, I'm really asking these questions because this is what the shit says. The greatest commandment for the Lord, your God, who is amongst you is a jealous God. Otherwise, the anger of the Lord, your God will be kindled against you and he will wipe you off the face of the earth. Do not test the Lord, your God, as you tested him at Massa. You are to diligently keep the commandments of the Lord, your God and the testimonies and statutes he has given you. I ask again, I'll put it on the frame while we do this dissertation, right? Who's your daddy? Who? Who? I'm starting to listen more to what Billy Carson and them be saying about a terrestrial God because this, this entity is speaking about humanistic characteristics such as jealousy, such as, you know, um, this nigga's a diva. You got to do all kinds of things to get his attention this offering and that offering and this prayer at this time of day with this particular scent yo my guy that's a lot going on right now when you gotta pray like this it's like who are we talking about this jealous god this sounds like a, a, a demigod i'm just saying i'm asking these questions because i want to know 
And I'm doing what they said don't do. I'm putting God to the test by asking questions, right? So that's blasphemy. That's blasphemy, right? Exodus 17, 2. So the people contended with Moses, give us water to drink. Why do you contend with me, Moses replied? Why do you test the Lord? Okay. Psalm 17, 18. They willfully tested God by demanding the food they crave. So we see, right, when the people have a need and a necessity and the people are, are starving or the people are parched and things of that nature and they've already showed their dedication, they're going to start questioning when the prayers don't come through, right, on some Kanye shit. Shout out to Ye. You know, they didn't listen to you when you told them that you had a dark, twisted fantasy. I heard you. I heard you, bro. Right? Are we going to have repentance? Are we going to have the same level of... Are y'all going to give Kanye the same grace that you give to the colonizer? Are you going to give Kanye the same grace that you give to your presidents? And I said that with a... Because it's plural. Presidents. Are you going to give Kanye the same grace that you give Jesus Christ? Okay. The walls of Jericho, Joshua 6.16. Then on... <laughs> Let me get back. Let me get back. The walls of Jericho. Then on the seventh day, they got up at dawn and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. That was the only day they circled the city seven times, circumscribing, right? After the seventh time around, the priest blew the horns and Joshua commanded the people, Shout! For the Lord has given you the city. Now the city and everything in it must be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab the prostitute and all those with her in the house will live because she hid the spies we sent. So you see where the contracts and the covenants originate from? Not only does she have the oldest profession on the planet because Eve was the first woman to get finessed by the serpent. She prostituted herself in the eyes of her husband by listening to another man and going with his directive and accepting food from his hand for her to eat. So she prostituted herself. That's why they tell you prostitution is the oldest profession because they're trying to tell you that Eve is a prostitute. Okay? So this all of this favor and i'm not knocking prostitutes or sex workers right i ask you earnestly and honestly who's the patron saint of sex workers because for them to have survived up until this time and they deal with the the most degraded aspects of our population right the sex workers are doing the heavy lifting at the lowest level because they have to have direct contact with the deviancy amongst us in society and give these niggas some box. Who's the patron saint that protects the sex workers? We need to set up an altar for them and make sure that they are thoroughly fed. Okay? Because I'd be damned if they ain't been putting on forever. So he made a pact with the prostitute. He destroyed the whole city but he, he saved the prostitutes and the one that was in the crib. So, every you know, he's resetting this stuff. And then the prostitutes is the only one left. Whoever's lived, they got, you know, residency boxes. And then you start populating from there. And then Papa was a rolling stone because he started having seeds with prostitutes. Right? Just like they like the daughters of men. You know, the gods started coming into the daughters of men. Who you think they was talking about? What you think they was talking about? Anyway. These are the Rolling Stones. <laughs> and then you abandon these seeds and shit. And you wonder why. When Judah turned and discovered that the battle was both before and behind them, they cried out to the Lord. Then the priest blew the trumpets. Right, a whole lot of blowing of the trumpets taking place. Joshua 6 5. Let's go back. And it shall come to pass that when they made a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, 
All the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before them. So they're talking about Jericho, right? And the sound frequency, the sound weapons they were utilized, right? They would turn to a certain frequency and a certain pitch. You feel me? Sound, light, power. There's power in sound. There's power in vibration. And you can destroy something that is not fortified in its foundation by utilizing a superior vibration to chant it down. Okay? The call of Gideon. Right? Like I said, this stuff flows succinctly into one another. Pause. Because... That's just the way that they wrote it. So now we're in Judges 6.16. Yes, I'm saving this. Please, my Lord, Gideon replied, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the youngest in my father's house. Surely I will be with you, the Lord replied, as I will strike down all of the Midianites as one man. Gideon answered, if I have found favor in your sight, give me a sign that it is you speaking with me. Okay. Shout out to you. Hey, yeah. Exodus 3:12. Yeah, I hear you. I will surely be with you, God said, and this will be the sign that you this will be the sign to you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Kemet, all of you will worship God on this mountain. Let's keep it moving. The ark returned to Israel, 1 Samuel 6, 16. And the Levites took down the ark of the Lord and the chest containing the gold objects, and they placed them on the large rock. The day the men of Beth Shemeth offered burnt offerings and made sacrifices to the Lord. And when the five rulers of the Philistines saw this, they returned to Exkron that same day as a guilt offering to the Lord. The Philistines had sent back one gold tumor for each city, Ashdod, Gaza, Ashkelon, Gath, and Ekron. So the Philistines are the Palestinians. We know this by just being able to read the goddamn text. Goliath is amongst the Philistines. Who are the Palestinians? Who are the Canaanites? Who are you niggas? But you don't want to be Palestinians. But you don't want to be Gazans. But you don't want to be Canaanites, but you want to read the fucking Bible. And I keep asking you, who do you think that you are? Who did your Nana tell you you was? Who did Big Mama tell you you was? Who did you read this book and it tell you who you were? You're the fucking Canaanites. But you keep scratching your head talking about what does this war have anything to do with me? They just signed your ass up. And you still asking what this war got to do with you and your baby's gonna go fight a war that you don't know what the war got to do with you and the war is against the destruction of the Palestinian people who are the fucking uh, Canaanites who are the people who the curse of Canaan fall upon right the definition of Palestine or the definition of Ham is a place in Palestine You sitting there clapping and, and parading for David and them, and they beating your people up. You, you were the Phoenicians. You were the Philistine. You, you were the Canaanites. You, they came to take your land. You were the one that are dispossessed. You were the one that they stripped down of their identity. You're the one that they're running with their cloth. You are the, you are the is Israel. I don't even know if I, you're the Israelis original and you're the original Gazans or the Palestinians both of them are cosplaying you and they're playing out the scripture that has been written about you in your face and you don't even know it because you're scratching your head over here lost talking about what that got to do with me this baby's dying in the Congo <laughs> okay Two kings, 616, his baby's dying here. And you playing the music celebrating it, nigga. What are you talking about? His baby's dying here. It's called drill music, and we all dance to it. Right? So when is enough going to be enough? 
right? When are we going to prioritize humanity first to be like, we are these people. We're all people. You feel me? If they're killing a baby over there, that shit is unjustified. It should be just as much as a blemish of what's going on over there in the Congo, what's going on in Palestine, as what's going on in Chicago or Old Block, or what's going on in Zone 6 here in Atlanta, or what's going on in East New York and in Brooklyn. These are our children. Who's your daddy? We are the fathers of civilization, but we're not acting like it. We are abandoning our seeds so we can go play PlayStation. Two Kings 616. Elisha captures, captures the blinded Arameans. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out in the early morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. So he asked Elisha, Oh, my master, what are we to do? Do not be afraid, Elisha answered, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Those who are with us are more than those that are with them. We represent the majority on the planet as a unified force of melanated people, of indigenous people, of people who have been wronged by the colonizer. It's more of us than it is of them. We are being ruled and operated by one to two percent of a population of a people who don't amount to diddly squat. And there's so much. There's so much benefit that comes with standing up and being yourself and being counted amongst the family of nations. And grabbing your, your grabbing your sack and letting it be known that daddy's home. There's so much. There's so much in that escrow. There's so much in that bin that they put to the side on the left when you got packed up. There's so much to it. You feel me? When are we going to develop the fervor to go and get it? And stop settling for this, 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 this second class citizenship shit globally. The nerve of these people to be determined in the future of our children in our face and the only thing you could tell me is to vote it's not going to work we need more than that then Elisha prayed oh Lord please open his eyes that he may see and the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw that the hills were full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha okay Exit is 14, 13. This is, this is deep and this is serious. Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the Lord's salvation, which he will accomplish for you today. For the commissions that you see today, you will never see again. And I have a tendency to believe that they was washing up the Ptolemies. So we're going to applaud that. Right. When, when when Papa was a Rolling Stone and he started making them amalgamated children, those are the commissions that got washed up. They Egyptians and shit, part Greek. Get them up out of here. The descendants of Levi. We find ourselves in 1 Chronicle 6.16. We were just speaking about the Levites. Jehozadak went into captivity when the Lord sent Judah and Jerusalem into exile by the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. Now listen to this. Again, I ask, who's your daddy? When the Lord sent Judah and Jerusalem into exiles by the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. So Nebuchadnezzar is a Babylonian king and the Babylonian king have their own Babylonian gods. We know a few of them. Moloch, Shamuel. Who else? Baal. Right? So how's God working with the ops? What happened to Babylon the Great? What happened to all of these aspects of Babylon where Babylon's supposed to be the rival? Why, why is Lucifer not the rival? Why is Satan not the rival? Why they never bombed the Satan church? Why they never ran down in a Satanic church and they have imperial Satanic churches right here in America? The headquarters is in Salem, Massachusetts. They got satanic churches that open up state legislators with statues in it. Why are they not the ops? Why? Aren't they the bad guys? 
How does it become everybody else? How does God work with the Nebuchadnezzar? So he empowers Nebuchadnezzar to do his bidding to spank his children. And when he gets the attention of his children, then he turns on the same people that he empowered to discipline his children. So that's the game that God plays, right? He's two-faced it. He's working both, both, both sides, right? As we say, the devil is God with a ski mask. And how could he not be? God has created his own controlled opposition. Because if he takes out the devil, then what? Who's the ops? Who's the opposition? And what use do we have if we don't have dualism to create this schism? Saying. Sent him into exile by the hands of Nebuchadnezzar. So now he's admitting that he works through the hand of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar has their own God. How are you guarding on the behalf of the Babylonians that you say are the ops? Anyway. And it's the same question that I'm asking about who's your daddy? How can the slave master pray to the same God that the slaves praying to? Right? And how does it look like he's being benefacting and beneficial to his light-skinned children and not his dark-skinned children who live in the shack, in the field, but the ones in the house got all the privilege. The lighter, the better. That's what we are being taught subconsciously in this society when they're telling you that this is a society where God rules, right? Or God blesses America. But America's a plantation. So is God blessing slave owners? Is God blessing a plantation? Why the plantation ain't burning? If we God's children, why is he not redeeming his children and empowering the hands of his children to slay the evildoers, the wicked doers, the ones that are unrighteous? Who's the ops? Have they been determined? No, they turned it around and said, you're the super predator and you're the op. And regardless of whatever conditions they put you in, if you allow yourself to become into an animal state, then you're supposed to be eliminated. And they got Project 2025 that they're rolling out with Trump as a candidate so they can initiate a Christian country, right, that is created in the, in the eyes of Christian Dome, which is a radicalized version of Christianity that specifically... Let me get back to this. 2 Chronicles 6.16 Solomon's prayer of dedication You have kept your promise to your servant, my father David which you spoke with your mouth you have fulfilled with your hand this day. Therefore now O Lord God of Israel keep for your servant, my father David, which you promised when you said you will never fail to have a man to sit before me on the throne of Israel if only your descendants guard their way to walk in my law as you have walked before me and now, O oh Lord, God of Israel, please confirm that you promised what you promised to your servant, David or David. OK. Two Chronicles 718. Then I will establish your royal throne as I covenanted with your father, David, when I said you will never fail to have a man to rule over Israel. OK. A lot of contracts, a lot of covenants. You feel me? The British monarchy sits on the throne of Britain saying that they are the direct descendants of the Davidic bloodline. So this promise that was made, right, is being enacted by King Charles in Britain and then by Netanyahu and them in Israel. Right? As they attempt to reconstitute the building of the third temple quote unquote Solomon's temple right that's what's going on Ezra the feast of dedication Ezra 616 then the people of Israel the priests the Levites and the rest of the exile celebrated the dedication of the house of God with joy for the dedication of the house of God they offered a hundred bulls 200 rams 400 lambs and a sin offering for all Israel of 12 male goats for each tribe of Israel. 
Okay? So, again, we ask. Again, we ask. Are y'all doing these offerings? Because these offerings is immaculate. You know what I'm saying? And they was very much into um, animal sacrifice. What animals are y'all sacrificing? You know what I'm saying? What animals are you sacrificing? Are you keeping to the tenets? Are you keeping to the instructions? Right? Are you being diligent in the details of the instructions? Because it's, it's very, very, very detailed. Who's still doing this? You feel me? Other than African traditional systems. For the dedication of the house of God, I would imagine they're speaking about the temple. They offered 100 bulls, 200 rams, 400 lambs, and a sin offering for all of Israel, right? Of 12 male goats for each tribe. So 144 goats. Hmm. Completion of the wall, Nehemiah 6.16. So the wall was completed in 52 days and on the 25th of Elul. When all of our enemies heard about this, all of the surrounding nations were afraid and disheartened for they realized that the task had been accomplished by our God. Also in those days, the nobles of Judah sent many letters to Tobiah and Tobiah's letters came back to them. So you got two separate people, right? You got the people of Judah and you got the people of Jerusalem. You got the tribe of Judah and then you got the Israelites. These are two distinctive people. You feel me? And they get unified with the British crown with their crest when they got the lion. Ain't no lions in Britain, y'all. They're speaking about the tribe of Judah. And they're sitting on the throne. Mordecai is honored. This is Esther 614. It didn't make it to 616. Haman told his wife Zeresh and all of his friends everything that had happened. His advisors and his wife Zeresh said to him, Since Mordecai, before whom your downfall has become, is Jewish, you will not prevail against him, for surely you will fail before him. While they were still speaking with Haman, the king's eunuchs arrived and rushed him to the banquet that Esther had prepared. Right? So you'll often hear them... Um, Evoking Mordecai, right? Mordecai, that's the Jew that you can't defeat. Job 616. Job replies, My complaint is just, but my brothers are as far as faithless as Wadis, as seasonal streams that overflow, darkened because of the ice and the inflow of melting snow, but ceasing in the dry season and vanishing from their channels in the heat. Okay? You know, more lamentations of Job. We're going to keep it moving. Proverbs 6.16, warnings against foolishness. All right. Therefore, calamity will come upon him suddenly. In an instant, he will be shattered beyond recovery. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, um, so on and so forth. Right. But he didn't like he didn't he didn't he didn't dislike the hands of Cain to shed the innocent blood of Abel. Not only did he did he um, protect them, he put a covering over him. So the first covenant that God made outside of the covenant that he made with Adam and Eve, which Eve destroyed and broke. Right. He stayed making covenants with the children that was breaking them, making Satan right from the gate. But he made a covenant and he made a covering over Cain that he was to be protected and nobody was to touch a hair on his on his head. So the murderers and the prostitutions and the prostitutes become the first vocation, right, that receives favor from God. 
And what are we left with today? Murder and prostitution. It's a scorpion world. presence of God. This is Psalm 16, 6, because 6 doesn't go to 16, so we flipped it around, and we got 16, 6. The presence of God. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The lines of my boundary have fallen in pleasant places. Surely my inheritance is delightful. I will bless the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my conscience instructs me. Right? Do a cross-reference. Jeremiah 3:19 and then I said how I long to make you my sons and give you a desirable land the most beautiful inheritance of all of the nations I thought you would call me father and never turn away from following me so he attempts to win the favor of his children by promising them Canaan land which was already occupied he double booked this shit like he was a bad Airbnb host he double booked like he was a bad Airbnb host and it's still the tragedy and the travesty of him not knowing the parameters of his own land and not understanding how to properly give our blessings is still being meted out today in a genocidal war, right? Where the very people who he promised to this land, that land is already occupied by people prior to them that he obviously promised the land to as well. Come on. What are we what are we talking about? Who's your daddy? Right? And what the Lord would do to gain favor of fatherhood. That ain't what our daddies had to do for us. They just put love on us. They just taught us discipline. They just were examples in our lives of what it looks like to be a man in this society, even against all odds. That's what our daddies did. Hmm. Amos seven seventeen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, thy wife will be an harlot in the city and thy sons and thy daughters shall fall by the sword and thy land shall be divided by line and thou shalt die in a polluted land and Israel shall surely go into captivity forth of his land. Hmm. The futility of life, Ecclesiastes 6, 12. For the more words, the more futility. And how does that profit anyone? For who knows what is good for a man during a few days in which he passes through this fleeting life like a shadow? Who can tell a man what will come after him under the sun? Apparently no one. Right. Ecclesiastes 322 will do a cross reference. I have seen that there is nothing better for a man than to enjoy his work because that is his lot for who can bring him to see what will come after him. Right. So like my, my father, my father's an atheist. You know what I'm saying? But he was dedicated. He is dedicated and determined in everything that he did or does. So he was able to teach me lessons about life and lessons about God that I never was able to learn in a church or in a Bible because I just saw him do. I just saw him, whatever he set his mind to do, whatever he said that he was going to do, those are the things that he got done. And he never made excuses. He never came up short. I never seen him coming home and, and you know, he had to start niggasplaining. You know, if he had to stay out longer to make it happen... That's what he did, but he never came home, you know what I'm saying, making excuses. And if, if there was an aspect of failure, he ain't bring that home with him. Well, when he came home, he was just hella quiet. So, you know what I'm saying? You, you ain't know what he was dealing with. When he couldn't deal, he wasn't, he wasn't willing to deal. You know, he would go and listen to his music, smoke his cigarettes, you know, read his books and stuff. You knew when to leave the man alone. You feel me? But 
He taught me what, what, what I needed to know by just doing, by being consistent. Dedication and, and determination, those are beautiful acronyms for dad, for a father. And salute to all of you fathers out there. Salute to all of you dads. You know? Oh, man. So, this is song 613. Together in the garden, right? And I got you guys. Y'all is in the garden with me today. We're together. We're in the garden. See, this is the whole garden. We're in church. Because the definition of church means a circle. Outside congregation discussing civil matters with citizens. That's the definition of a church. That definition was provided nonetheless by Paul. So we outside, we in the church. Outside ministries. Oh. Before I realized that my desire has set me amongst the royal chariots of my people. Come back, come back, oh Shulamite. Come back, come back, that we may gaze upon you. Where do you look at the Shulamite as on the dance of Mahanim? Mm. Deep. We're going to keep it moving. A prophecy of Moab's devastation. This is Isaiah 16, 6. Shout out to all of the Moabites and the Moabitesses out there. You know, they say that the Moors come from the Moabs, but they got a beating in the Bible. In love and devotion, a throne will be established in the tent of David. A judge seeking justice and hastening righteousness will sit on it, sit on, on it faithlessness. We have heard of Moab's pomposity, his exceeding pride and conceit, his overflowing arrogance, right? But his boasting is empty. Therefore, let Moab well, let them well together for Moab. Moan for the raising cakes of Kerharish, Kerharisheth. You who are utterly stricken. What's your nationality? <laughs> yeah, they. Yeah, they be the more the Moors in here. <clears throat> Amos two one. This is what the Lord says: For three transgressions of Moab, even four, I will not revoke my judgment because he burnt to lime the bones of Edom's king. Right? You punishing him for? Destroying the Edomites? Come on, fam. Who's the ops here? Jeremiah 6.16, Jerusalem's final warning. Are they ashamed of the abomination they have committed? No, they have no shame at all. They do not even know how to blush. So they will fall amongst the fallen. When I punish them, they will collapse, says the Lord. This is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Where is the good way? Then walk in it and you will find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. I appointed watchmen over you and said, listen for the sound of the ram's horn. But they answered, we will not listen. Right. So same way the Pope and the rest of them be like, cease fire. Stop it. It's genocide. Right. And the pompous nature of this nation of this Zionist nation says we will not stop. We will continue. We're going to kill, 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 right? There has to be an equal and just retribution for that. This is Jeremiah 6.16. This is given today. A remnant to be blessed. Ezekiel 6.14. Then you will know that I am the Lord when their slain lie amongst their idols around their altars on every hill, high hill, on all of the mountaintops and under every green tree and leafy oak. The places where they offered fragrant incense to all of their idols. I will stretch out my hand against them and wherever they live, I will make the land a desolate waste from the wilderness to Dibla. They will know that I am the Lord. That's a pretty emotional Lord, who be hella in his feelings, who don't want to share nothing with nobody, but he's always jumping in somebody else's situations. And how did he not establish that there's a one God monotheistic situation on the planet when he came around? Kemet had gods. India had gods. The Africans had gods. 
he ain't know about the Americas, but he's omnipresent. The Americas had gods, and they was all thousands of years older than the Jewish god, Jehovah. He's the new kid on the block. How can you allow that to happen? And you destroy humanity all of these times just for them to get new gods when they came back? I don't get this shit. This, it, but, but then you and your feelings, then you got the nerve to have emotions, my nigga? Come on now. You did a bad job at guarding, at spreading your brand. A remnant to be blessed. Right? That's Ezekiel 616. He, he pretty much lays it down right there. Isaiah 525, therefore the anger of the Lord burns against his people. His hand is raised against them to strike them down. The mountains quake and the corpses lay like refuse in the streets. Despite all this, his anger is not turned away. His hand is still upraised. Joshua's, no, Jerusalem's unfaithfulness, right? This is Ezekiel 6, 16, 6. No one cared enough for you to do even one of the things out of compassion for you. Instead, you were thrown out into the open field because you were despised on the day of your birth. Then I passed by and saw you wallowing in your blood. And as you lay there in your blood, I said to you, live. There I said to you, live. I made you thrive like a plant of the field. You grew up and matured and became very beautiful. Your breasts were formed and your hair grew, but you were naked and bare. Woo. This is given. This is sadomasochistic. Daniel 6, 6, 6, 16. This is real heavy handed, man. It's real heavy handed. Daniel and the lion's den. All right, let's get it. You guys are familiar with this. Daniel's in the lion's den. Okay. Then the men approached the king together and said to him, Remember, O king, that by the law of Medes and Persians, no decree or ordinance established by the king can be changed. So the king gave the order, and they brought Daniel and threw him into the den of lions. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you serve, continually deliver you. A stone was brought and placed over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the rings of his nobles, so that nothing concerning Daniel can be changed. So you already know from this conversation, there was not one God at that time. There was no such thing as a monotheistic God. They were banging, God's banging on one another. Like if they're banging right now and Israel is fighting Hamas, one of them is praying to Jehovah and one of them is praying to Allah. And both of those gods are going to war. But when the Shiites fight the Sunnis, like when the Saudi Arabians fight the Iranians and they both are praying to Allah, Who's mitigating that? Or when the slave master is praying to Jesus and so is the slave, how does Jesus mitigate that? Especially if the blessings are equated to bountiful and abundance. Master live in the big house and the slave lives live in the shack and he's eating shards of pork that was outlawed by the same goddamn prophet that they're reading about. Who told you that it's forbidden? But you made a delicacy out of it. Daniel's in the lion den. The pride of Egypt. No, the pride of Israel. My bad. Amos 614. You who rejoice in Lodabar and say, did we not take Karanim by our own strength? For behold, I will raise up a nation against you. O house of Israel declares the Lord, the God of hosts. And they will oppress you from Labo Hamath to the brook of Arabah. So how is this not the God's um, will? How is this not how 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 with 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 the with the Nazis did to the Jews? This shit is all through the Bible that they're gonna get punished like that. So how's that not how's that not considered biblical decree? How's that not considered prophecy fulfilled? How are they not standing on this? Cause the Pope was condoning it. The punishment of Israel, Micah 6.16, you will sow but not reap. You will press olives but not anoint yourselves with oil. You will tread grapes but not drink the wine. You have kept the statues of Omri and all of the practices of Arab's house. 
you have followed their counsel. Therefore, I will make you a desolation and your inhabitants an object of content. You will bear the scorn of the nations. Right. So they're saying you follow the practices of Ahab's house. Ahab would be like when Abram grew up in Ur of Chaldea under the Babylonians. So Ahab, I think just like the story they tell you with Jonah and shit like that, they were they were worshiping different gods. There was always different gods. There always is different gods to this day. Today is the day set aside for the Lord because today's Sunday. Yesterday was Saturn Day and it was for that God. And Friday was for Venus and Thursday was for Thor and Wednesday was for Odin and Tuesday was for Mars. All of these are gods. So how can these people tell you that you live in a monotheistic society, my nigga? They're fucking lying to your face. And this is the month of June. That shit is named after Juno, which is a Roman god. And next month is Julius Caesar, which is named after a man who they made God, which is Julius Augustus Caesar. Stop allowing them to lie in your face. Ask the simple questions. Therefore, I will make you a desolation in your inhabitants, an object of contempt. You will be the scorn of all nations. Right. This is in Micah 616 and it's titled the punishment of the Zionists or the Israel, the Israel. Zechariah 615, the crown in the temple. OK, the crown will reside in the temple of the Lord as a memorial to Helam. Tobajah, Jebeiah and the gracious son of Zephaniah. Right. Even those far away will come and build the temple of the Lord and you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. This will happen if you dil diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. Right. Isaiah 60, 10 foreigners will rebuild your walls and their kings will serve you. Although I struck you in anger, yet I fa yet in favor, I will show you mercy. This nigga has more mood swings than a woman on her cycle. He does. He does. So whoever's adopting this, you putting on the cloak of this identity and the shit comes with fire and brimstones. It comes with blessings, contracts and covenants as well. But you got to get ready for the goddamn fire and brimstones to come along with putting on this personality or this cloak of identity. Proper fasting, Matthew 616. Now we in a new one. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive yours. When you fast, do not be somber like the hypocrites, for they dis disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they already have their full reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face. Like when I'm working out, right? My trainer tell me, don't put an ugly face on, right? You got to look a particular way. So look, that's my time. It's ticking down. Um... Revelation 6.16, the sixth seal, seal, terror. When the kings of the earth, the nobles, the commanders, the rich, the mighty, and every slave and free man hid in the caves and amongst the rocks of the mountains, and they said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of the one seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Okay? Papa was a rolling stone, and he created fear in the hearts of the children that he called his own. <laughs> <laughs> but when he died, all he left us was alone. And he ain't even leave us alone. That's my time, y'all. It's the, the clock is ticking. I got 50 seconds remaining. I want to leave y'all on that high note. Peace, love, and light. And um, yeah, we'll spin a block and do this another time. Peace. <laughs>